All right, welcome back for part three here. Um, this is called graphing sinusoidal functions too, but really the, this is the new ones, and we talked about that one already, although it will come up again um, in this video. We could approach all the reciprocal ones in the same way we did tangent, which was to um, which was to get a table, but in the reciprocal one, just flip all these values because that's what it is. Um, but I'm not going to do that because we're smarter than that. We can have have a little think about this, about reciprocal graphs, and be able to get these graphs actually fairly easily. They're surprising maybe the way they look, but it's not that bad. For instance, this first one, y equals the secant of x. Well, we know that secant of x is equal to 1 over cos x, right? That's one of the relationships we learned last year as well. And then we can use all this stuff that we know about reciprocal graphs, right? We know if, if we can graph what's on the bottom, we can come up with its reciprocal graph fairly easily. For instance, one of the things that we said is where the red graph is zero, its reciprocal has an asymptote, right? So that means Whatever secant looks like, and we don't know what it looks like yet, it's going to have a whole bunch of asymptotes, similar to um, to the tangent graph, but but not quite. Um, what was the next thing that we 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 said? We said, well, um, well, where the red graph cos x has a one or a minus one, it has a shared point, and the, the idea is. If, where this is 1, this is 1 as well. Where this is negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1, the reciprocal of that is negative 1 as well. So that's a shared point. This is a shared point. This is a shared point. Uh, how do we get the rest? Well, um, there was a few other facts. So for instance, when, when the red graph was, po was positive, the blue graph, the reciprocal also has to be positive. Well, okay, so that means that the blue graph is only going to be positive here. When it's negative, it's going to be it's going to be negative down here, perhaps. Oops, getting messy there. Um, when this one's negative, the blue one's positive. It'll be up here. But how do I get the details? Well, there are a couple other facts that we can use. One is when one graph is decreasing, when the red one is decreasing, its reciprocal is increasing. Right. The idea is. When this is getting uh, smaller, this is getting bigger, right? Okay, what else? So I can see this is going uphill. When one is close to zero, when the red is close to zero, when that's a teeny number, and I flip it, it's going to be po positive, so, or positive and huge. So in fact, I'm going to get this shape, like that. Uh, and similar on that side. What about over here? Well, when this graph is decreasing, this graph is increasing. When this graph is close to zero, this graph is far away from zero. Uh, similarly, when this graph is increasing, this graph is decreasing. When this graph is close to zero, its reciprocal is far away from zero. Um, and I can see, and this is going to be zero again here, I'm going to get this sort of shape. And by the way, I am okay with just these few important points. And if you need to graph uh, cos x to help you with secant x, you go right ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, this is the graph of secant x. What I want you to do, what I want you to try, that's that one done. Pause the video and see if you can come up with the cosecant graph. And if you f you're feeling like a million bucks today, you might even want to try that one. Um, uh, you should pause the video, give it a go. I'll I'll, uh, I'll um, pick it up very shortly here. Um, all right, hopefully you, you gave it a go. I'm going to go through this one pretty qu quickly. There's my graph of y equals sine x, and we know uh, 1 over sine x, that's the cosecant of x. So I'm trying to graph y equals cosecant x. So how do I do that? I know where sine has a 0, cosecant has an asymptote, asymptote, asymptote. Asymptote, asymptote. 
where sine x has a 1, uh, cosecant's going to have a 1. Where sine x has a negative 1, cosecant's going to have a negative 1. And so on. Notice this scale is a little bit different than the one above, so it's a little bit different. And I get the same sort of shapes. Some people have described them as as parabolas. They're not parabolas because parabolas don't have asymptotes because this is an asymptote, a vertical asymptote there. Um, it's not a, a parabola, but if that helps you remember the shapes, then by all means you go ahead and, and think of them as parabolas. Maybe don't call them that though. Uh, and so on. There's sine x. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through cotan. We just learned tan, but let's go through cotan. Um, I'm going to go through how you would come up with the tangent quickly. I remember the tangent as, I know it's undefined at pi over 2. And then there's a little, uh, the period is pi. There's a, a blank in there where there's graph and so on. And so that's where my asymptotes are going to be. And I know that tan starts at 0. And then there's a 0 there. This is my tan graph. Uh, at pi over 4, there's, there's a, a nice points at 1 right, like this, and that minus 1, which are going to come in handy when we do the um, the reciprocal. Okay, and there's the tan graph. Try and do it as smooth as you can. It's supposed to look periodic, not jerky at all. Um, dandy. This isn't so bad. One there, too. Okay, so there's how I would do y equals tan x as fast as can be. Now I'm going to think about the reciprocal. So where the red graph has a zero, its reciprocal has an asymptote. So asymptote here, asymptote here, asymptote here, asymptotes all over the place. Um, and notice that the second thing, there's ones and minus ones all over the place too. So where the red graph has a one, the green graph is going to have a shared point. There's shared points at ones and minus ones all over the place, all over the place, all over the place. Um, what's left to do is to finish it off. Now, what happens, because we know that cotan x is 1 over tan x, what happens when this is an asymptote? What do you think happens here? Remember, the other way, when this is 0, this has got an asymptote. So when this has got an asymptote, what do you think this happens here? Yeah, it does. It has a 0, just like this. And asymptote there just like that just like that and notice what do I have I have almost the same shape reflected or going in the opposite direction however you want to think of it uh, the relationship between tan and cotan so this green graph is y equals cotan x um, that's how we graph it notice all the other reciprocal things work when the red is close to zero, the green is far from zero. When the red is increasing, the green is decreasing. When, when the green is uh, close to zero, the red is far from zero, and so on. Um, do you have to graph the red one to be able to gr graph the green one? No. I'm, I'm thinking that after you practice this a couple times, and you should practice it, that you'll be able to do it without um, drawing tan x. For homework, not much. Fill out all these sheets. And then there's an FAQ to go with it. The sheets that I'm talking about is there's a bunch of these other frayer ones. And don't just copy. You can do your own. I will post these all on the Facebook group as long as you remind me. Uh, maybe you're going to try and that's why I'm going fast. See if you can catch it. Right? I'm going fast so you can't just copy. Do your own sheets. Um, and practice your graphs. That's it.